So hi guys, I am Sabrina from The Power Within Us and I am here today with a very special guest, JP Sears. Hi JP. Hey Sabrina, thank you for having me into your lovely uh, offering to the world. Oh, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us and um, I just wanted to, to ask you to introduce yourself and, and tell our guests and our audience what, what you do for a living. Yeah, I will. And also, I apologize. If you can hear that helicopter noise, wow, that is so loud. I queued them up. I paid them several thousand dollars to oh, fly yeah. by right at the intro for our interview. And their timing was perfect. I'll have Special to give effects. them some I love that. <laughs> I just need everybody to know how important I am. There's helicopters uh, flying around me. Yeah, so what I do, I do, uh, I guess, a few things. I do emotional healing work. I have a private client practice, and I, I'm blessed that I get to help people help themselves heal their heart, step deeper into their personal power. I make uh, YouTube videos as well. I've got a... Um, uh, comedy segment on my channel, Ultra Spiritual Comedy. I've also got plenty of just straightforward, uh, serious videos. And what else I do, I am also very fortunate that I get to travel around and do different speaking engagements, uh, lead retreats. So in other words, I'm, uh, I do consider myself a very blessed person. And uh, I also would consider myself someone who's constantly working on diving inward to new depths of myself, getting to know the stranger that lives inside of me. Oh, wow. And um, when, when did you start, JP? What led you to start doing this kind of work? Did anything change in your life? And, you know, <laughs> tell us. It's, it's a good question. In hindsight, looking back, I would say that uh, just like some of the wise women would have said throughout the ages, we tend to teach what we need to learn the most. Yeah. So I think why I got interested in doing emotional healing work with other people back a decade and a half or so ago was it's what I needed the most. And I would dare say I was too arrogant to be able to actually realize it and claim like my human need, like I need healing inside. I need to like learn to, I need to better learn how to uh, connect with myself and know myself. So I just projected that need on other people and thought, <laughs> oh, I want to help other people in their journeys. But, you know, very quickly I realized like, wow, I am a stranger to my own self. There's more about me that I don't know compared to what I do know about me. And, you know, the, uh, one of the focal points that kind of helped open my eyes was uh, I think in 2001, I met a beautiful mentor, a guy named Paul Check, and uh, he was a, a, a very deeply spiritual person. I didn't know that when I first met him, uh, but he opened my eyes to the mystery that lies beyond our five senses, as well as the mystery that lies beyond the mental concepts and stories of ourself and others that we hold so tightly. So, uh, from there, it was just, you know, a very progressive yet perpetual opening of my curiosity. Oh, wow. And I also wanted to ask you, when when did you start introducing, you know, the comedy side of of yourself into the healing? Because that's, that's huge. It's a, yeah. it's a great work you do with that. Oh, well, thank you. I feel... Uh, really good hearing that. I guess that proves I'm codependent, but <laughs> screw it, I'm going with it. I love the compliment. Thank you, Sabrina. Uh, to be relatively exact, October 5th, 2014 was the date I've published the first ultra spiritual comedy video. I'd been doing YouTube videos for about a year and a half before that, and they were significantly uh, of a sort of straightforward, just serious nature. I'd have little quirks of my natural humorous personality that would come out in those. But the, you know, in late 2014 with the first ultra spiritual video, that was the first time I really allowed my, I guess, my proverbial clothes to come off and allow myself to be just more me on camera or at, at least expose the part of me 
that I hadn't exposed before, this part of me that's very real, very humorous, very satirical. And I had been constipating that part of me because I made up a story that said, you know, it's bad for business uh, if I'm uh, humorous. It's bad for business if I'm doing parodies on the things that are meaningful to mm -hmm. me. People won't see me as a, a significant emotional health authority or spiritual teacher or whatever they want to call me. Mm -hmm. And and I, had, I made up those stories and uh, most humorously, I believed those stories for a while. Yet in late 2014, apparently uh, I had accumulated enough discomfort of avoiding myself that I was now willing to uh, present myself uh, a little bit more authentically. Uh, even though it felt scary at the time, because I did have this story that said, you know, it's bad for business. It's, it will make me look bad if I look like myself on camera. Mm, mm, wow. That's wonderful that you decided to take that step because, you know, you became such a big hit in, and the, the messages that you, you bring with the comedy are such important messages such as, you know, I have awakened or whatever awakened not long ago and, and the, the first thing that we, we tend to, to discover when we awaken and go into the spiritual path is that you start using this terminology to compare yourself to other human beings and start to develop this sense of, oh, I'm better than you, which is completely missing the point of the spiritual story in the first place. So it's great that you, you're bringing this up with such a joy and grace and comedy and really like, hang on a second, this is not, <laughs> this is not mm. the point, guys. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I love how you can see it that way. And uh, I think I agree with every, every word that you just said. And they were nice words, so of course I'm going to agree with them. And yeah, I, I do believe, especially looking at my life with my spiritual practice, it took me a while to realize, like, wow, there's even a shadow side to a spiritual practice. There's my ego agenda that gets involved, what it means to my ego to be more yogic than other people, to meditate longer than other people, to be walking the path longer than other people, to be able to appear more calm and balanced than other people. That's all ego agenda and welcome to humankind. I'm a human too. Of course I do that stuff. However, I think that shadow side uh, has a really, um, it can really work against us when we keep that shadow in the shadow. In other words, when it's functioning, but we're just not aware of it. I was very unaware of my spiritual shadow side, if you will, for a long time. But being able to recognize it, which that's what I do in the videos. I shine the light on stuff that I do. It's my own dogma. It's therapeutic for me, to be quite honest with you. So I dare say once we can shine the light on our shadow side, uh, it gets to be a functional part of us rather than it being a shadow within a shadow. In other words, we're unaware that we're unaware of it. And I think that kind of works against us. Mm. So, yeah, long story short, I, I do believe that all of us to a degree, usually a large degree, if we're not aware of it, have our spiritual beliefs and spiritual practices uh, interfere with our spiritual life. And we have, we're very convinced of our rationalizations and the trouble with them is a lot of them are just simply true. Therefore, we, uh, they're so easy to buy into, but we're so convinced of our rationalizations that we say to ourselves through a very spiritualized vocabulary that it's very easy to see how our spiritual practices can make us very unspiritual. Oh. So I, I think there's a paradox. The path we take to find ourselves can also be the path we lose ourselves on if we become attached to the path, if we start to self-identify with it, if we start to gain an egoic sense of significance from it, and if our path uh, starts to have this progressive, uh, you know, uh, uh, err of exclusion rather than mm. inclusive. Uh, inclusivity with the world and people around us you know can we be just as happy sitting in a bar full of uh, uh, drunk people as we are sitting in a, a meditation circle 
hopefully, uh, in my opinion, the more uh, integrated and inclusive we can be with the world around us, the less we're using our spiritual spiritual practice in the vocabulary of oneness, the less we're using that to actually separate ourselves. And in my opinion, spirituality is all about, in a way, getting back to oneness. It's all about resolving the lines of separation rather than using our spiritual practices to solidify and build up lines of separation. For sure. That's very wise what you just said. And um, I, I really, truly believe in that. And uh, thank you so much for, for, you know, saying that again and reminding everyone about the, the true meaning of oneness and spirituality. And it's mm-hmm. so great to kind of, you know, be able to see someone doing this work out there and really putting their heart and soul into it. So um, another question, <laughs> I just wanted to ask you, uh, you know, bring your ultra spiritual side into, into the play and you know, <laughs> getting serious here. Um, so what do you think about the Ascension movement? Is, is there a myth? Is this really happening? Is that some sort of like awakening collective around the world? What do you, what do you feel about that? Uh, yes, and the Ascension movement was initiated when I put out my first ultra spiritual video, You're Welcome World. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> and... Another part of me would answer that question with, I might be a delusional optimist, and there might be no might be about it. I'm probably definitely a delusional optimist. So my delusional belief would be there there really does seem to be a shift that's happening, and it's been happening in the, call it the collective consciousness of people around the world. I remember 15 years ago, it was very rare for me to find someone else who calls themselves spiritual. Like, oh, wow, you've read The Power of Now. Cool, we should hang out. <laughs> and, and now it's actually, I find it very rare for me to encounter people who haven't read The Power of Now, just to pick like a reference point of the shift of consciousness. And and I I know there's large parts of the population who are, uh, you know, haven't read The Power of Now, to use that as a status symbol. Yet I think there is, We again, my delusional optimist would like to believe we've passed a point of no return. I think there's been enough inertia created that the world is waking up, and uh, I do think waking up is an infinite process. And... Uh, it just seems to be happening now more than it's ever been. And to me, that's an exciting time to be in. And I, I also realize it's a very scary time to be in. Much like if your alarm clock goes off at six o'clock in the morning, we all know waking up is hard to do. And I think that that term, waking up is hard to do, is so true. Like as much as we don't like to wake up in the morning against our will, uh, I think it's like that for us and just our conscious awareness. There's a lot of old belief, uh, a lot of old senses of self, a lot of old emotional wounds that we hang on to, that we self-identify with. And a lot of it is painful stuff. Yet a lot of that pain is comfortable pain because it's very familiar. It's what we know ourselves relatively to. So as we wake up, I think there is a a very real sense within our human minds and feeling-oriented systems that we're being shattered, uh, that we're actually losing ourself. And at a very primal level, I believe our human ego reacts as though we're going through a death as we're being progressively born into a new level of conscious awareness and I think paradoxically, anytime we're being born into something greater, our primal ego reacts as though we're dying. Much like if we could get inside the feelings of an infant as it's being born, as it's being pushed through the birth canal, the feelings would probably register as, I'm dying. 
Well, we can see, you know, the infant's actually being born into something greater. It's being born into a greater life than what it has inside the womb. And there has to be a metaphoric death brought to what was in order to go through the birth canal and be born into something uh, greater. And I don't mean greater as in better. I just mean greater as in perhaps more expanded consciousness. Some people would judge that to be worse because it's less comfortable. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my the story I make up from my delusional optimist point of view. Great. Well, thank you so much. Um, I think you have time for one more question. <laughs> Hit me <laughs> with it, sister. Just, just yeah. uh, because it's so great sometimes to to know the story behind you know every person, and that's one of the reasons why I've been you know inspired to do these uh, interviews to connect people and to to know them and to share the story and and to share their their heart. So I wanted to ask you if you could um, share with us. Which one was one of the most amazing uh, moments of your spiritual awakening and your, your journey? And if you'd like to share with us either the, the most joyful or the, the hardest or which, which was the moment that you would like to share with us to inspire other people to, you know, to go along with that journey? Yeah, what comes to my mind first, it would have been, uh, I think, going back to... Uh, early 2000s, maybe 2003, and I showed up uh, to uh, a, a workshop. It's like in a kind of a self-growth, spiritual type of workshop kind of thing. And I showed up with a lot of arrogance, thinking I'm going to come here and learn some things so I can help other people because they need it. And the, the man teaching the workshop was an absolute angel inside of a human body. And he's been a great friend and mentor ever since, a guy named John McMullen. And uh, by that afternoon, I was just a sobbing mess of tears. Uh, I was feeling my, and what, what happened is through uh, the grace of this man, I was now feeling my heart for the first time in a long time. I had carried so much pain, wounding, just constipation in my heart that it had been numb for longer than I could recall. So I was a fish swimming in the waters of numbness. I didn't know I had pain because I was numb to it. So there I was feeling my pain and having emotions flow through me in a way that uh, was uh, not comfortable for me. So it was uh, not pleasant at all, and it was incredibly graceful. It helped give me my heart back. And, and I think that experience of vulnerability, there's nothing that could have taken its place. No knowledge I could have accumulated in my head that would have replaced that softening of my heart that happened in that moment. I still have a lot more softening to go. But uh, being a puddle of tears was, uh, that afternoon was a very significant time in my journey. How wonderful. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to participate in this interview. Thank you. <laughs> namaste. Oh, oh namaste. 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 <laughs> No, nobody knows how to like pronounce that. I it. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and also, so, I wanted, Brina, it, I oh, wanted to tell ahead. everyone that, you know, uh, we're going to put the link so they can sign up to your YouTube uh, video channel. And as well, I really wanted to, to point it out that uh, JP does a coach and healing sessions. So I'm definitely going to put the links to that so everyone can find out more about his wonderful work. Um, and yes, JP, you got anything to say? <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, well, first, thank you for all that sh shameless self-promotion of me. I love it. And uh, <laughs> yeah, Sabrina, thank you so much for having me on to this lovely offering that you gift the world. I think there's a lot of power within us. I think the uh, our true power, not the illusion of power, but our true power within us is uh, what we need the most. And it's what part of us fears uh, fears the most. So uh, I love the whole theme of the work that you do, the power thank within you. us. That's a beautiful message. And thank you for uh, gifting me the opportunity to be with you this afternoon. Thank you so much. Thank you, JP. You're welcome. Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching. All right.